There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Well, this is a really fun, exciting video for me to make because I have been honored by my friend Mikiko, who is joining us today from a dark room in Ireland. <laughs> Hello, Mikiko. Hi, Sean. Tell the viewers, you're, this is not a bite-sized book chat. This is going to be quite it's a long-form chat. Tell them how you're honoring me. <laughs> I am honoring you. So I decided this year to change my reading up a little bit. You very kindly, you know, extended a camera flip option to your viewers once upon a time. And I submitted that camera flip video. And at that time, I had been trying to prioritize reading certain types of texts because, you know, when I had read those, I seemed to enjoy them. And at that time, I was reading a lot of literary fiction and genre fiction, and I wasn't really enjoying it. So I pulled back from that for about three years. And at the end of last year, I thought, gosh, there are so many books out there, especially books that I've seen on your channel, that I just, I really want to read. They are, you know, literary fiction, and I haven't been prioritizing that. And I thought, why don't I refocus back on literary fiction? And I knew that my TBR was full of those <laughs> that I had heard you talk about. And I thought, okay, let's go through, let's check out which ones are Sean's and pick a few. And Let's pick his five stars, because if you're going to read anything, you want to read what he loved and enjoyed. And I thought it would be a very nice way to, you know, commemorate you and, and uh, you know, thank you, because you are always so kind and extend invitations for me to come and talk about books with you. So I thought, you know, our tastes are pretty similar, I think. Like, I think when you tend to enjoy a book, I also tend to enjoy it. So I thought, I mean... If, if I don't, no big deal. Um, but I hope, that my hope is that I also enjoy these books. Well, I, I'm very honored. This is really fun. <laughs> You've taken this it project on. And we're going to talk today about uh, some or all of the books that you've picked. We'll get into that in a moment. But I have to want to back up to the first part of your, your story here about you said that whenever you submitted the camera flip that you were reading mostly literary fiction and genre fiction and it didn't go well. Yeah. So you changed your focus. What's left aside from genre fiction or literary fiction? <laughs> I was, so I ended up, you know, every month I decided to read a classic, a nonfiction mm -hmm. short story collection or short stories. I tried to squeeze in different types of, of books that I just, I knew I enjoyed as I read them. I, I think I also did plays, just kind of ignoring literary fiction for a little while, you know, just putting it to the side. Um, and I think, yeah, and I think at that time as well, I was just listening to a lot of booktubers, just pulling what they were enjoying. And I think ignoring my own instinct to, you know, what I would normally gravitate towards as well. You know? And that's okay, because I really enjoyed that, that reading project. And I mean, I did it for three years almost. So it, it was a joy and it definitely suited me. And now I feel like I have a better understanding of those, you know, those types of texts. I'd like to kind of go back to, to literary fiction a bit more, or at least, at least prioritize it a bit more because I haven't been prioritizing it at all. Well, I'm glad that you have come back from the dark side. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're back on the side of sweetness and light, although not necessarily light reading. Like reading. No. So how many books have you chosen? So I'd like to read six. Okay, well, first one is Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tien. Yes. Good choice. <laughs> I think that you'd recommended this when we were having one of our other chats and I just hadn't gotten around to it. So now is the time. Like me. It would just, it would be just like me because this is the best novel I've read in my entire life. There we go. I compare every, I, I read it about seven years ago, maybe six or seven years ago, mm -hmm. maybe the year it came out. I compare every novel to it and none has ever measured up. So, and it's really? such a Marmite novel. It won, I think the Canadian Governor was General's the, Award General's it was nominated Award? for the Women's Prize. It might have even been nominated for the Booker. I can't remember, but certainly has received a lot of recognition. Um, so many people don't like it. <laughs> I was actually going to ask if it had been nominated for the Giller, but um, yeah. I, I don't mean, remember which one. One of the two or maybe yeah. both. I'm not sure. But like I, I gave it just a gift to my mom and she tried it oh, twice nice. and she could finish it. 
Um, so many people on BookTube that I know didn't finish it or didn't <laughs> like it. But I think it's one of the best novels ever ever read. So it is a Marmite book. Uh-huh. So we can definitely still be friends if you don't like it. <laughs> so why do you think people don't enjoy it then, just out of curiosity? Well, it's... Perhaps as somebody who's used to linear fiction, it's a, it's not linear and there's okay. different storylines set in different times and that might be hard to follow. Okay. Um, there's a lot of history in it or hmm, maybe the, the way to say it is the, the characters, it's set, it goes back to the Chinese revolution and mm. right through to the Tiananmen Square massacre, the massacre. And, and, and some of the characters end up in, in Vancouver, Canada. Okay. And it opens in Vancouver, Canada, and then goes back and works its way forward, but not in a linear fashion. And I think some of all some of those storylines are maybe a little complex to follow for a certain kind mm. of reader. I didn't think I wanted to read it because it was about musicians and composers in China. And I didn't at that time, I thought, I don't I know, I'm not that interested in music. And I'm certainly not interested in China. <laughs> and, I, and I absolutely loved it. Oh, lovely. Other people have complained they thought all the characters were alike, which I don't think is true. That was not my experience. Mm -hmm. I thought the characters were very distinct and memorable. So people have different reactions to it. Okay. Okay. Still excited. Yeah, I'm excited for you. For me, because it's my favorite book, I'm pretty much mute on why I liked it. I tend to lose my words when it's a book that means so much to me. I was like Mm -hmm. that with my talk read last year is it on your list let's see yes it is i have nothing to say i just stare into the camera grasping for words and that's that's me (laughs) at my most eloquent about the book but uh do not say we have nothing and i've met the author and i embarrassed myself oh no i was uh, fangirling and (laughs) i'll put put the photo of me and her please do oh please Um, do but i just thought it was profound just absolutely great Oh, well, I do look forward to it. And I have heard good things about it. The second book is Happening by Annie Erno, translated from the yes. French by Tanya Leslie. I read this just at the end of last year, and you have read right. it. We've decided we're not going to talk about your reaction to it. We're going to save that for a wrap-up video when you've read all of these books, right? hmm But why did you choose it? Can you separate why you chose it from what your reaction is on the other end of that? <laughs> well, I'd heard a lot of people talking about it won the Nobel Prize that's year. right that's right oh, that's- so I th- I think that it was just kind of highlighted on booktube I saw it in bookshops and I know I had remembered a few people talking about it you included and so I thought oh wow this is a very I thought it was actually quite big compared to what it is it's very short um and I very thought short. well I do enjoy I do enjoy shorter works whether they're fiction or non-fiction so I picked it up and I was interested because you know I, I'm always interested to hear about women's experiences, their opinions about whether or not to have kids and, and you know, what they make their decisions based on. And it, that interests me because I, I don't have children. I've never felt the desire to have children. And physically, I cannot, I cannot conceive and carry a child to full term. You know, I just can't. So I'm always interested to hear what people people say. I know a lot of people had talked about it being quite controversial. She was an, a, a young university student when she got pregnant. By yeah. then, she didn't know very well and wasn't interested nope. in marrying. And she nope. opted to have an abortion when it was illegal in France. So that yeah. if there's people out there that find that controversial, I don't really want to know those kind of people. <laughs> to me, that's no. not controversial. But it was controversial no. in its day. Yes. I'll edit my editorial out because that's... No, not that's necessary. perfect. But, 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 no, but, no, no. Uh, it's, tr- it's true, yeah, though. That's it, a good I, point. I, I, I think we'll just leave our discussion right there and come back to, we'll circle Sounds back good. in our second video. Oh, I'm excited about this one. I'm excited <laughs> about all of them, obviously, but <laughs> Woman Running in the Mountains by Yuko Tsushima, translated from the Japanese yes. by Geraldine Harcourt. Yes. Yeah. I remember hearing you talk about this initially after you'd finished reading it and you started talking about it. And you were enthusiastic about it. And I remember thinking, this sounds great. I stopped it. (laughs) 
<laughs> because I wasn't, I didn't want to really hear anymore. And so I kind of put you on mute and let you talk about it because I thought, I think this is something I'm going to want to listen to or read. And, you just and gazed I know I wanted, into my eyes. I just gazed into your eyes. I wanted to give you the view because you deserve the view. But I was thinking, <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to know anymore because I, I think this is something I'm going to want to listen to. And actually, recently I haven't read a lot of Japanese fiction. Uh, translated fiction. I mean, I think the last thing I read, I mean, I've read short stories. Joe and I attempted to read Joe Smith, uh, infamous commenter on videos. Uh, she and I were uh, reading Life Ceremony. But I mean, other than that, there's nothing I've really read since Convenience Store Woman, which was at least two years ago. So I thought maybe it's time to go back um, and and see what this is all about. Thank I'd never, you, ever ever heard of Yuko Tsushima. So this is a first for me. And she's my favorite Japanese writer. She's one of my oh. very most favorite writers. Nice. And it, uh, this is the third novel that I've read by her and I've loved mm -hmm. each one better. Yeah. Oh, this wow. Is the best. And, oh, fantastic. Uh, it was a crossover book. I started it in Tokyo and finished it in my early few, first few weeks living in back in Canada. Oh, um, in a way, the premise is similar to Annie Ernaux's in that a young unwed Japanese woman gets pregnant and right. what she decides to do. Yeah. The next one, I guess you're having trouble finding now, but it's a The little. Peacock by Isabel yes. Bogdan, translated from the German by Annie Rutherford. Yes. <laughs> I remember you talking about, I don't know whether it was that it's a bit, I don't think you used the word smutty. Or, and I don't know if you talked about a certain sex scene or something, but it sounded a little bit risque. Uh, the best word probably is sensual or sensual. You know, mildly erotic passage in there an otherwise in a go. book that is otherwise not a, a sexual, not sexy story at all. But yeah, that it, get, it got my award for sexiest writing or scene. There yeah. we go. And so I thought, hmm, I wonder, I'm very curious as to what that would be like. like what is that? what is that? So I wow. thought, okay, but you also talked very highly of it outside of that. So I thought, okay, well, it's not just that, which is fair enough, obviously. It's a very unusual novel and I have a full review. Any of these books that I have a, a, a full review on, they'll be linked in the show notes for those of you watching. But this one, it is very strange and it's a very light novel for my tastes and I absolutely loved it. I'm not going to give very much uh, of a premise, but it's set <laughs> In the Scottish Highlands, a relatively impoverished uh, lady and lord ha have converted their expensive their property into uh, yes. um, a vacation resort or whatever. And it's booked by a for a weekend by a group of bankers who are taking a team building workshop. Oh, and that's okay. the opening premise. And the peacock is a very important part of the story. It's very humorous. And the other interesting thing that I'm dying to hear your thoughts on once you finished Mm -hmm. And this is not a spoiler or anything, but that the there's no direct dialogue in it. It's all rendered. Instead of saying, how are you? She said. It's all, all of the dialogue is, she asked him how he was. Oh, it's indirect speech. I think that's indirect, indirect speech, right? Indirect speech, yeah. Yes. Oh. And I've oh, never read a book like that, and it worked, and I still don't know how to talk about what it what was the effect of it or whatever but it certainly okay. was a part of the part of what was so darned interesting about that and it's written by a german novelist set in scotland so so there's no german characters in it it's really interesting and do we do you know if the author spent time in scotland then i don't them? remember okay i That'll attended, the, I'll take I attended the zoom book launch attend is not the right word but you know i watched it oh wow Oh. And book launched, and I, I nice. think she had some connection to Scotland. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, nice. And dying to hear your thoughts. I hope you can I get track down a copy. If you can't track yes. down a copy, I will get you a copy. How about that? Let's let's make a Thank promise you. right here and now. All right. Sounds good. Thank right. you. <laughs> Much appreciated. Book number five was my top yes. read of twenty twenty two. Indelicacy yes. by Amina Kane. Yes. Yes, another book that I heard you start to talk about, and you said that you really enjoyed it, and I stopped listening. It's <laughs> like, okay, this is something I need to I need to pick up. Well, leaving the volume up or leaving the volume down would have been the same experience because I just was like, um, yeah. um 
I loved it so much. I don't know what to say. But you didn't miss much. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Again, I don't know that much about it. I kn- but I do know that a lot of people were talking about it. There was a lot of buzz around it. And actually, at first, when I saw it on your channel, I think the cover that I've seen has like a kind of red and blue mosaic. But that, the cover right. that you, yeah, but the cover you had put up was a woman. I believe it's a woman sitting in a, a brownish maybe backdrop. Maybe a nun, maybe a nun yeah. or something, yeah. So I was like, oh, that looks interesting. So when I actually had put it on like my TBR, I didn't realize it was the same book you had mentioned. And then when I went through looking for books, I was like, oh, that's that's the book. Okay, perfect. Here's a word for you. Maybe you know it. Okay. I didn't know it until 2022. Okay. And it was my word of the year for my reading uh, highlights of the of 2022. Ekphrasis. Ekphrasis. No. It's a rhetorical Ekphrasis. device like okay. autonomy and m- metaphor and simile, yep. all those words. It's yep. one of those words. And it means capturing or re- uh, depicting one medium in another. Oh, so like a painting depicting About a photograph music. or a photograph oh. or a depicting an, an, uh, an or image. A piece of, a piece of music depicting right. a painting, right? So two of my important reads last year were significantly frastic and writing about art. So that's all I'll okay. say because you don't want to know too much, but okay. keep that in your mind. I Frisus. will, I will. That is an ephrastic book. <laughs> now I have to use that adjective in my review. And the other thing that I have to just like to tell you, because I haven't had a chance okay. to tell anybody, okay. I'm, Amina sure. Kane, the author, she started following me on Instagram <gasps> this week. Congratulations. Oh my <laughs> gosh. She, I don't think she, know, she knows I exist or has seen any of my videos about it, but one of my Goodreads friends, he read it because of my review. And he right. commented on that. And then I commented on the video on his review on Instagram. And she found she it and she, it. she followed him and me. Love. At the same time. Oh, that's amazing. And the last one is also it just maybe it was my sixth most favorite book of the year, but it came very close to being in my top five. Butter, Honey, Pig Bread by Francesca Equoyazzi. Yes. This one, I mean, I, it was already on my radar because I, well, I mean, it was, it was all over like the, my library's homepage because it is written by a Canadian Nigerian author. Um, and so I, I had seen the cover, the cover is beautiful, but then when I would watch your Friday reads or when I would watch you talk about it, you just would, you would keep saying, this is going really well. This is really great. This is really great. Wait, but I was thinking, okay, well, you know, what is it about? So I took a sneak peek at the summary on the dust jacket and it sounded quite interesting. And of course that was a while ago. So I don't even actually really remember what that was about either, but I have a feeling that this is going to be something I like. It's wonderful. I loved it. Okay, I loved good. it. If you're on a diet, it's maybe not good to read. You don't, you don't, so you don't have to worry because you would even <laughs> need to be on a diet, but it just, it's so much, it's so much food and cooking in it. It's just oh, constantly. Oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> also, it's also a very sensual book. I loved oh, the two nice. twin characters, twin Nigerian young women. One is mm-hmm. queer and one is not. That that queer character, she just about turned me into a lesbian. Oh, she, wow. Yeah, yeah. She's and I don't sensual? mean there's lots of graphic sex. Not lots yeah. of graphic sex. I don't remember if there was any graphic sex, but she's just a very sexual being. And I love the way mm. her way of being in the world as a very sexual being was represented on the page. It was lush. It was oh, lush. nice. Have you read Akweke Ameze's Freshwater? No, I haven't. And actually, that was one book that I tried, I think, three or four times, and I just couldn't get into. And it, okay. and I kept thinking, yeah, and I kept thinking, I'll get into it. I'll get into it. I'll get into it. And I think it was the wrong time kind of thing time. like it just wasn't sure. the right yeah it yeah, yeah. Because, it's yeah definitely because the writing it was well it is definitely a companion volume to butter honey peg bread in some of the themes okay. of spirituality nigerian spirituality and i can't remember if the correct pronunciation of that uh, type of spirituality or religion is obanji or ogbanji uh, one mm. of them is correct and the other one is not so i, I, I apologize okay. for not remembering which is which, but that is a very important part of both books. So, okay, I'm excited for you. So that's your sixth book. 
Yes. You've got your reading cut out for you. <laughs> well, they all look pretty interesting. So I don't think I'm going to, I don't think it's going to be too difficult. I mean, poor me, I have to read books, right? So. <laughs> well, I have just decided that I'm going to similarly honor you oh. in 2024 what? by choosing six of your favorite books and reading no. them next year. So there oh, we go. No, If you hate them, will you still be my friend? <laughs> if you hate mine, will you still be your mine? Of course. I don't well, judge people based on their tastes in reading. On that happy note, I'm yes. really excited for you. Thank you for doing this. And we'll Thank check you. in whenever you finish later in the year. Sounds good. Thank you.